for all of you parents out there and for some of you players, we just wanted to help give you a guideline or some benchmarks as to what kind of programs you should be looking for or what kind of skills you really want to focus on. Hello and happy Monday. Welcome back to Volleyball A to Z where we talk all about player development and navigate this dynamic world of choosing different classes or camps or teams. Uh, today we're talking about volleyball skills by age. So this is for you parents out there who are maybe starting in this journey or trying to figure out kind of where those benchmarks are as your athlete continues to develop and grow. Our guest today is a future MVVA full-time coach, Tim, who I would consider an expert in player development. All right, so we have Tim with us today. Tim, welcome. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm glad to be excited. Good. Um, so I already talked about how you're an expert in player development. So if you want to just give us a little introduction on your background, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, I've spent the uh, last 11 years coaching USAV Juniors Volleyball. Uh, most of that time has been in the younger age categories um, from about 10 to 15, 16. Um, and I've, I've done a few 17s, 18s teams during that time. Um, at the same time, I have seven years of collegiate coaching experience, so I've seen what it looks like at the highest level. Um, and just, I was just really, really intrigued by skill development when I first started playing. I lacked a little bit of that in my own playing, so I made it a point as a coach to just how do I do this and what matters at younger ages. So I've definitely gone through various stages of learning in terms of what I believe to be the most important and um, had enough experience seeing players play to be comfortable saying, yes, this is what a, a player should look like at this age in terms of are they a beginner, an intermediate, or advanced level player. Uh, most of my time was spent in the North Texas region. Uh, Amy, Amy's aware that uh, there's there's several tough regions out there. That's definitely one of them. So uh, I've had the opportunity to see the game played at a really high level at some pretty young ages. Yeah, yeah, I love it. We'll share share some of your stories later. Um, so just a review. So today we're going to talk about a lot of uh, skills by age groups. So I know as coaches, that's not always how we think, but for all of you parents out there and for some of you players, we just wanted to help give you a guideline or some benchmarks as to what kind of programs you should be looking for or what kind of skills you really want to focus on so you can develop with everyone else your age or you can surpass them based on all of these clues. <laughs> Yeah, sounds great. All right, so we're just going to start youngest to oldest here. So if our okay. our under 10, so our under 10, maybe our 11 age groups um, really focus on skills. So parents, what you want to look for when you enroll your kid or your athlete in these different programs are skills classes. So short classes, maybe an hour to an hour and a half that really help them find out what is passing or what is a volleyball or even where is the antenna. So these classes that help them with coordination, vocabulary and court awareness. Yeah, at that age, um, just basic movement um, becomes pretty important because players haven't haven't learned how to move well in, in relation to the sport because it's it's brand new to them. So you're going to see things like, um, you know, able to, the ability to move laterally forward and backwards with just a little bit of coordination become a big thing at that age. Um, it, it's always interesting when you when you get players that have done other sports and so they're really comfortable in movement, they tend to start at a more advanced level than if you have someone who's just not used to um, playing uh, other sports at all, which is fine. They usually catch up relatively quickly. It just takes them a bit to, to get used to just moving around. And then, like you said, as, as far as the skills go, just really understanding what the skills are, uh, being able to demo it to them for them to see it, what it looks like so they can start imitating what is good. Uh, that helps a lot, too. Yeah, I know. At MVBA, um, our under 10 and 11 classes are Youth Academy and Bali Juniors, and we really, really, really focus on passing and setting but very much the coordination and the skill requirements. So 
not so much like in gameplay or you know going to a target but just getting the initial movement down we we do a little bit of serving and hitting but that's mostly for fun <laughs> we sh we kind of show them what they're doing but it's really just passing and setting yeah and the great thing about passing and setting is is you're going to use that all the way through i mean you look at the professionals and what do they all do pass and set so it's, it's a couple of skills and that, i think at every level in volleyball that's the great thing is is the skills that you learn are going to apply throughout your entire career yeah it's definitely the basis one one thing i know that parents really enjoy is that once they if they don't have a volleyball background themselves, once they enter their athletes into these classes, it helps them kind of learn too. So one way to, to keep your athlete engaged or to learn yourself is to have them show you what they did in class. Or if you can stay, stay and see some of these drills or things that maybe you can do at home too. Yep, definitely. So I would say at um, for the U10 level, um, in terms of the actual skills, um, understanding basics like how to put your platform together well um, to, to make the ball, you know, make your arms and wrists be even, things like that. You know, how to put your hands in the ball well, those sort of things. I'm, I'm focusing probably a little less on where things are going in terms of a player's accuracy because they're young and they're not nearly as strong as the older players, especially when it comes to things like setting. A lot of it's just coming to the idea down of Hey, do you understand what this should look like? And uh, can you demo, you know, without a ball? And, and that, that's at the U10 level, that's probably where I'm looking for. Yeah, and we'll definitely, don't worry, mom and dad, we'll send them home tired so they don't just sit around and lecture. They'll, they'll go through different drills or games or even sometimes it's, well, I'll call it a trick drill. So maybe they're not touching a ball, but they're using a tennis ball or they're using a hula hoop to kind of learn these different movements and they get really tired. <laughs> well, an hour to hour and a half is great too because at that age, that's about, that's about what you're looking for in terms of they're going to be done doing whatever activity they were doing after about an hour and a half, uh, regardless of what you're doing. So um, it's, it's a good time frame for them. Yeah, and definitely you'll you'll know as a parent when it's time to go to the next level once they really have kind of those skills not solidified but at least understand how they fit into the bigger picture. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so when we move on more to age 12, um, according to USA Volleyball, that's kind of their first opportunity to play club volleyball on a team. Um, in previous you know, episodes, we've talked about house leagues are kind of the different options before playing on a team. Um, but this is kind of where you would want to start entering your athlete into a team scenario so they can kind of take those skills and vocab and coordination that they've learned and start to work with somebody next to them or within a game situation. Yeah, so 11 and 12, you're going to start seeing some level of consistency in terms of you know, my ability to react to a ball coming over the net to me now instead of just between myself and my teammate or coming from a coach. So you'll definitely want to see more um, over the net activities in terms of can I pass a serve that's coming at me, whether that's an overhand or an underhand serve, uh, can I, I move my feet well. Uh, again, not a lot of consistency in terms of what we're looking for so much as are they understanding movement patterns, right? So I saw the way you moved to go receive. I saw the way you were putting your arms together. It may not have been the best pass in the world, but you have the idea right and you're moving well. So um, being able to react to the ball coming over the net to you is probably becoming a much bigger deal in terms of skill development at this age. Yeah, and for sure, um, starting to introduce that communication. So not only me talking about the ball and it's mine but making sure that once i touch it then the next person knows what to do <laughs> so whether i'm saying yeah. my yeah. someone's name or some coaches will say what's the next action that will happen um there's different things that can happen but it's not only dependent on you but you and your teammate yep definitely a uh, everyone being on the same um perspective, I guess, is, is the word I'm looking for. I had a coaching friend of mine 
uh, he talks about reading and he says, you know, we, we speak about, especially at the higher levels, how important reading is in volleyball. So, but maybe what we don't talk about enough is, are you reading the game the same way as your teammates? So something as little as starting with communication things at this age will help them develop that when they're older. Yes, I totally agree. And well, oh, we forgot to talk about it. So anyone under 12 and below, they get a few adaptations to their game. Um, volleyball doesn't have a lot for each age group, like soccer or basketball. Uh, but for volleyball, they have a lower net. So if you're 12 or below, your net is, I think, six feet, three inches or something like that. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've looked that one up. It's lower. Um, and then they also have a lighter ball. So they're often called volley lights or molten, I know, has a ball called first touch. Um, but it's a little bit lighter, a little bit squishier. So it shouldn't, I know, hurt their arms if they pass or set. Um, and it helps, it definitely helps them learn how to serve and create kind of that muscle memory to overhand serve or underhand serve. Underhand serving at this age is perfectly okay. It's all about putting the ball in play. Yes, and uh, it's easy to get caught up in wanting to serve overhand, which is great, and I practice overhand every practice with my athletes, even the ones who aren't there yet, but serving underhand is absolutely fine. For a lot of them, that's just a physical development thing that they're gonna be fine with when they get one or two years older. Yes, serving, serving will come. Every, every athlete will learn how to do it. They're all gonna learn it in a different way. Um, and then again, so same thing with our younger ages. Once your athlete um, is kind of showing that desire that they wanna move on, maybe they've completed their first season with their team or they've completed a season in a house league, that's when parents will start to look for different skills camps. So usually this is two days just during the day. It's not quite an overnight or a destination camp, um, but just a few places where you know they can go, they can meet new friends, maybe l learn some new things before they reach that 13, 14 age group. Yeah, yeah. And then jumping back to skill side for a bit in turn. So you're introducing the overhand serve for some athletes are gonna pick that up real, real quick. Some are just gonna take them a little bit of physical development time to get that and that's fine. Um, you also start wanting to get the athletes to learn the, uh, a little bit of an overhand swing, whether they're jumping or not, uh, to at least introduce the skill. So in gameplay, we're not going to see that happening a ton in terms of consistency, but in practice, um, they're going to start understanding the basic rhythm to a uh, hitting approach. Um, you know, whether or not they can execute that in the game at that point in time, that's okay. We just want to introduce it to them so they have that going on at the next level. Yeah, and that's definitely what a lot of these these all skills camp is is an introduction. So when you're on your team, you kind of get an introduction to a lot of these skills. Or when you go to camp, especially at that, you know, 11, 12, 13 age range, it's definitely you know what the skills are from your skills classes. But then you get that introduction into all the different puzzle pieces because volleyball is hard. I say that a lot. Volleyball is a hard sport to to learn and to play and even those who have been playing for a very long time will say that it's hard. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I like to tell people it's, it's, there are elements of our game that's very simple, but they're very hard to do well. Yes, definitely. And that's kind of when we go to that, that 13, 14 age is really, um, in my opinion, that split between if you are still playing recreationally or if you're playing competitively. But whatever path your athlete takes, parents still need to practice patience because this is kind of that age where, especially with girls, they're starting to grow and maybe they're developing more muscle or maybe they're getting taller. So some of these skills that they've learned when they were little are going to kind of change and adapt as they get to these, these ages. So really having that patience for the overall game and for your own athletes very important absolutely um just in talking you know understanding the individual differences with your kids and just having patience with them i'm going to throw a couple of stories out here real quick um so this is two different athletes from the same u12 team that i started with right um the one athlete was just kind of 
just a very easygoing kid. Um, only really, you know, I asked her one time, I was like, Hey, you, you know, you're, you have a lot of potential. Where do you want to go with this? And she was just like, well, I really like basketball. I don't know if I like volleyball that much, but I'm just kind of here to play with my friends, you know? So that was her attitude and her approach. And that was fine. She was just there to enjoy the game, learn the skills. And then as she got older, you know, that she started to fall in love with the game. She started to put in more time and effort. Um, she ended up getting a division one scholarship, just a real phenomenal athlete. And then on the flip side, I had an athlete come in who was just from the get go as a third grader was just coach. I see all these older kids jump serving. I want to jump serve. And what can I do to jump serve? And everything that she did was about developing and getting, and, uh, she's actually a senior this year. And so she'll be, she'll be looking for scholarships. She's also a great player. So we have two great players, um, high skill levels, but just completely different attitudes and approaches to the games in the terms of the way they, they handled it at younger ages. So parents, it's absolutely okay if your kid, you know, has a different perspective than, than other players um, at the younger ages because they're just, they're just there to experience the game and learn the skills. And then the attitude and mentality for competitive training comes in a little bit older when they around 14 or 15. Yes, definitely. This is kind of when the race the race starts. So everyone runs the race at their own pace. Um, and, you know, we just want to be there as coaches and parents as their support system to what they want to do. Absolutely. Yes. So when we're when we're looking at the 13, 14 age group, this is this is another kind of parents have to do some decision making and research, but this is kind of when club volleyball really um, ramps up. It's one of the larger age groups within um, the whole spectrum across the country, those 13 and 14 year olds. Uh, and this is also when the travel tournaments really start to play play in. So I know for us, we host Capitol Hill Classic in the Northern Virginia area, um, and that's a travel tournament. People from all over the country will come. Um, but then we also have these options for regional tournaments. So we'll host tournaments within an hour and a half driving distance. And I know that that's very common in all areas of the country. Um, so really at this age, it's up to the athlete and the parent to decide what fits kind of within your family. I always laugh a little when I hear driving, just, uh, I'm from Texas. That's my background. So a short drive is about an hour to hour and a half. Uh, I don't think we start thinking a drive as long until you hit three hours. Uh, that's just how you have to get from town to town in Texas. So it always just makes me laugh a little bit when I hear about, uh, travel time, but yeah, 13s, 14s, um, it's definitely getting a little more serious, maybe more at the 14s level than the 13s level, but you'll see a lot of similar skills. Um, maybe maybe the difference is, is more mentally at the 13 to 14 year old, um, but skills, we're looking for more consistency now. Um, the overhand serve is definitely, we should have an overhand serve. Um, you, your ability to pass to target now, not just pass the ball up, but to be pretty consistent with where you're directing that first ball coming in at you. Um, setting should be getting to where we can set all the way out, we can set our middle, we can back set. Um, um, again, the consistency in terms of setting, you're looking for maybe some a decent level of consistency, I'd say. Um, just the ability to get the ball behind you. We're not looking for anything crazy in terms of tempo or pace or location, but you need to be able to hit your outside, your middle, and your backside at this at this age level. Um, hitting should should be a full run, jump, and swing, not just standing and hitting the ball over the net. Uh, and then defense, being able to you know play some defense when the player's hitting. So it's a pretty big shift going from the 11 to 12 year old to the 13 to 14. Um, and there's the big mix in the skill at this age level as everyone's kind of figuring out how to play. But I would say an intermediate level skilled player should be able to do those things that I, that I just said. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. And I know um, in my programs position or programs director position, this is when parents will often talk about or ask about playing the different roles on the team. So it's like, well, my daughter is an outside hitter or my son is definitely a middle. Um, so just really 
being open to playing different positions because again we go back like they're they're growing they're figuring out what their most consistent skill is um, and just being open to you know what role you want to play on that team and just learning where your strengths and talents really are because sometimes coaches will put you in a different position and the players aren't open to figuring out if they want to play in that role and then they maybe lose out on an opportunity to find a role that's perfect for them that's that's huge just speaking from my collegiate coaching background um, i wish more players would have experienced different roles growing up uh, it's it's so big um, you're, you're not at that age, you're not going to perfect your skill in a single position enough at that age level to make it worth only playing that, that skill. There's so much that you're still just learning about your body and about development that only being willing to play a single position is not helpful to your development. It'd be a lot better for you if you learned how to do every skill. And now if you find a role on a team and that's your thing, that's okay. But if your coach asks you to play another role, it's going to do nothing but help you experience um, more skills and see the game from a different perspective. Um, I had a very, a very small athlete who, in practice, I had her play all the way around. In tournaments, I had her play the libero role or the defensive specialist role. Um, this was at age 12 and 13 and 14. I had her 12, 13s, and 14s. Um, she was 85, 4. Um, she just never grew any more than that. But so logic dictated that she would be a defensive player, but I found it important to teach her to do everything. Well, her first couple of years of high school, they used her as a front row hitter, even though she was smaller than everyone else, she just had a great arm swing from that development. And so she found a role there. Now she kept up with all of her other skills. So collegiately, she is playing libero now in college. Um, she's at Texas Tech University right now. Um, but, you know, she was, she played outside hitter. She played middle hitter as just you know, a small kid, you wouldn't typically expect to do that just because it felt like it was important for her when she was young to develop all of her skills. Yes. You know, and the flip side of that is true for your taller players, um, mm -hmm. for them to learn at least the basics of defense and passing. And this is a big age just to be willing to say, hey, I know I'm not used to this. And it's a little scary for a kid who's used to doing one thing to try something new. So parents, if you can just support them in that, understand that it's, it's challenging and a bit scary for them to make that switch. Um, it's going to do nothing but help them in the long run. Yes, I'm I'm a big believer in middles can pass, setters can hit, <laughs> liberos can block. Like as long yes. as they know the basis and are given the opportunity to practice all of those things, all those different skills, they, they're going to be a, a very well-rounded player. Yes, I agree. And that's definitely bringing us to once you have completed maybe your 13s or your 14s um, season, that's kind of when you can start looking into those those bigger camps. So maybe they're four days or a week long uh, and you can do a day camp. If, if your athlete feels comfortable, maybe this is their first overnight camp with the option for mom and dad to pick them up if they don't want to stay. Um, but this is definitely where kind of that that open social comes in because with volleyball yes at the schools maybe you have middle school volleyball at your school or if not you really have to socialize with all of those players um, and then it's also when you're starting to get ready for your freshman season so you want to be where these other freshmen are to kind of see where your skills compare to theirs yeah i would i agree 100 percent. I think at this age, those a little bit longer, a um, little bit more in-depth skills camp is, is a big thing for them, you know, for both the 13s and the 14s, um, for, you know, for the 13s getting ready for their next year uh, and for the 14s getting ready for that freshman season where they're coming in and, and things start to get real competitive. So because camps are typically going to be in this, this summer, so you're, you're okay, your ability to experience the game and to learn and to grow. Um, but things start to get really competitive that next year as your freshman year. So these longer school camps are great. And then from a camp development perspective, um, we used to run these camps. Um, I remember when I very first started coaching, I'd help out a lot at our local college and they were five days uh, long. And that tended to be really long for this age group. Um, I have found um, just from a mental exhaustion perspective for the athletes, this age group does really well at three to four days. 
Um, but you know, you can kind of make a judgment call as parents as, as to what you know about your athletes. But, uh, I really like the three to four day length camps, um, for this age. Yeah. This is also, um, outside of kind of physical skill. This is really the summer after your 13, 14 season is when that volleyball IQ starts to really take shape. So understanding kind of strategies and the ebb and flow of the game, or like we talked about all of our skills, like, you know, where you should serve the ball based on the other team's rotation or hitting around a block. So just not really expert level, but really understanding and taking shape. Yep, absolutely. So then our 15, 16 year, maybe you've just completed your freshman season or at some times you're a sophomore at that age. Um, this is the probably the biggest shift when it comes to your, yeah. vo- your volleyball path. Um, so, Tim, I'm going to let you talk about skills here first. Yeah, 100% agree with you. This is where, you know, you're going to decide, hey, is this just something I really enjoy doing and and I'm really enjoying playing for my high school and I just I love the sport or do you get more serious? You say this, okay, I I love this is everything and I want to play in college. I love it Uh, because this you got to get real serious at this age in terms of what your focus and what your goals are. So for skill development now, all of the stuff that we talked about earlier now becomes you want to be consistent with everything. So setters need to be able to precisely locate the ball. It's not enough that, hey, I got it up to my hitter, but did you put that in a little three foot by three foot window and what we agreed was the spot the ball needed to be? Can you set the ball at different paces consistently? Can you set it fast? Can you set it uh, with consistency, right? Um, you know, from a setting perspective, you're going to start to need to be able to understand what it means to run an offense, how to attack the other team's defense based on where you're setting your own hitters uh, from a setting perspective. Um, all players should be able to set if your setter gets in trouble because that becomes a big strategy element. If your game is determined by how well you set and I put the ball on your setter, do you have another person on the team that can step up and put up a good hittable ball? So that's why it's important at the younger ages to develop all skills because every player needs to be able to step in and put up a good hittable ball. Um, So we haven't just gotten consistent with hitting now. Like you said earlier, this is the age where I need to be able to hit with intent. Okay, I need to jump. I need to know where they're blocking. I need to be able to attack around that block and start hitting with intent. You may not be perfect at it, but you need to be able to hit with intent. Um, Passing, we just expect, again, another higher level of consistency with passing. Although you'll start to find that as the opponent serve develops, um, you, there's not a ton of, of, of passing changes when you hit 15, 16s, and 17s, 18s, because the serve tends to get tough with the passing as well. So you definitely want a whole other level of passing, but the other team's getting a whole other level of serving. Serving, you want to be able to hit targets. Um, you want to be able to put, put either a, a very accurate ball on the court or a ball with a lot of velocity on the court or in an ideal situation, both, but that can be really tough to do. Uh, let's see. Defensively, um, your understanding of the game starts playing a really big role. So where you need to be on the court based on your team's defense, what your coach has asked you to do, and then your ability to read what the other player starts to do starts coming into play. So this is just a really big level of step in terms of both skills and volleyball IQ. So I think the key there is you're going to have consistency in everything and your level of expectation picks up just a little bit. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree on everything. And like, again, outside of those physical skills, this is usually when the athletes will start to have an opinion um, or a request for where their career is taking them. So they might ask, ask you, mom and dad, like, hey, I really want to go to a volleyball camp. And this is something great to get in the habit of trying to figure out to, how, together. So maybe, you know, mom and dad, take the pressure off yourself. You don't have to go to Google and you don't have to do the research, um, but have your athlete look for maybe a club or a camp and really kind of take ownership of their career. Yep, absolutely. 
Um, this is also also another time too, uh, just to understand this whole club season where tournaments are going to get longer. So they're going to be about three days now instead of maybe one or two um, where they'll have pool play, pool play, and then a bracket play. So it's very important, again, outside of these physical skills to really talk about, you know, nutrition and injury prevention too. Yes, um, again, especially as you get into the, the higher end of this age group uh, with 15s and 16s. You know, understanding rest and recovery, understanding physical conditioning, understanding a little bit about nutrition. Um, and that's going to pick up again a whole other level when we step up in age group. But the intro to all of that should definitely, you should have a solid foundation at this age at this level. And, and definitely vice versa. It's, it's okay at this age group too, where you can just enjoy volleyball and you can play recreationally. Maybe you, you do play for your school or you play for a regional program or what we call a house program uh, where you don't travel for those tournaments or you don't leave the state. Um, maybe you are still playing, you know, a simple rotation versus a complex one or rotating in a circle. As long as your athlete is enjoying the sport and they're happy and that's what they want to do, um, you really want to have those open conversations at this 15 and 16 age to set the expectations for each other as the parent and as the athlete. Yeah, that, I would agree there for sure because I, I've met plenty of athletes who at this age didn't really want to play collegiately they just wanted to enjoy it and that was great and it worked you know they end up they go on and they don't end up playing in college or they do end up playing in college um, but they, a big key to that is is were they able to handle that conversation well uh, on, with their parents um, sometimes at this age if you push them for something they don't necessarily are ready um, you'll see a lot of burnout um, you'll see a lot of athletes stop playing Whereas if you allow them to progress, you know, through a good conversation with them, they figure out what they're looking for and they're going at their own pace. I've seen plenty of athletes turn around at 15 and 16 who didn't want to play college, but were just enjoying the sport and part of a, a good regional program. Um, all of a sudden at 17s, 18s, they go, hey, you know what? I think I really do want to play. And then they end up deciding to play in college or maybe they don't. And either way, it's great. Um, but the danger is at 15, 16, if we push a little too hard, they'll just, they'll lose interest and then they tend to not enjoy it as much. So just maybe keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah. And a great, a great facilitator for these conversations are definitely your athlete's coach. So it's, it's that great, you know, open and positive relationship where you can talk to the coach and ask hey, I'd love to talk to my athlete about this situation. Can you help me? Instead of kind of holding it in and having those closed conversations. And I know sometimes that results in parents negatively talking to the coach or negatively talking to their athlete or vice versa for any um, situation. So having that open communication where both parties or even all three parties are just trying to learn and make the best decision together. Um, I would agree. I heard I heard some feedback. It actually wasn't related to this at all. Uh, it's Andrea Becker. She's the uh, sports psychologist uh, for the men's national team. Or at least she was back in the 2012-2016 uh, cycle. Um, and she was she was actually talking about serving. Um, you know, in terms of just being able just to have a conversation and not be like, well, this is good or this is bad with our athletes, but just hey, let's just talk about it and this is it. And uh, you know, like you said, having the coach jump in there as a facilitator, being able just to have a conversation, um, that's just a great starting point. Yeah, I think it helps get every every party on the right the right track before that next decision making age group, which is which is lots of decisions. <laughs> So again, yes, for sure. Our transition um, time, and, and you'll, you'll see um, right right before we step into that seventeenth, uh, eighteenth age division, you'll see a very few athletes um, starting to commit to college at this age, at the sixteenth age level. But um, having worked with, um, actually, I was at the College of Charleston as their technical coordinator for this last semester, and I was chatting with him a lot, you know, as far as to what he's looking for, and even at at that level, um, at kind of the mid-level Division One, even their big recruiting age groups in terms of commitments aren't until 17s. 
So don't get too caught up at 15, 16 level looking for that. Um, that's not, um, that's, that's a much more rare occurrence than it's made out to be. Yes, I definitely, I definitely agree that sometimes you kind of see these press releases or, you know, these signing days and, and you forget that these, these athletes are a little bit older and it is the rare occasion across the whole entire country that a 15 or 16 year old will, will commit. All right. Yep. So making exactly. making that transition now to that seven, that 17, 18, uh, this is when the 15, 16 age group will start to do those overnight camps. Um, and this can will either be run by kind of um, a volleyball facility. So for us at VBA, we don't run our overnight camps, but we do have our, our week-long camps. So if people do want to travel to them, they can travel. And I've done this in my career where we just stay at a hotel. Um, but this, this volleyball camp was so, so great that we wanted to go to it. Um, or they would attend a collegiate camp. So it's hosted on campus. They stay on campus. They experience the campus, you know, food. It's also a great introduction just to what the college lifestyle is. So even if you're not looking to play collegiately, it gives you an experience of what a college campus uh, can feel like or just trying to navigate on your own. Yeah, uh, it, it's definitely, you, you're stepping in 15, 16s up to the 17s, 18s in terms of your camp decision making process. Uh, you definitely are looking for high levels of skill development. You're definitely looking for, um, like you said, just collegiate experience in terms of what does this look like. Maybe I would get to a little bit of a feel for it. Um, you know, uh, we have had athletes uh, attend our camps um, at at the universities that I've been at who chose to stay in hotels too because it was a bit of a distance drive for them for our day camp or you know in in other scenarios where it's an overnight camp where they're staying in the dorms so yeah so definitely they'll have to definitely be able to experience that um, another another thing that might kind of pop up a little bit more is some private lessons so really focusing on some of that position training. I know that there are camps that are dedicated to that, and that's a great way to kind of, again, set a benchmark between you and other people at your age at camp. But if there are certain things that you really want to learn, like very specific details, um, so if you're trying to consistently jump float or as setters, you know, you're trying to make these certain moves or hitters are trying to hit these certain shots, that's really when lessons will come in to play. And it doesn't always happen at once. Um, I know coaches, like we yeah. love to see these athletes come back for multiple lessons because that's really how these habits and these skills are built. Right. I used to joke all the time with like, hey, if I could take this player and put her with this player, I'd have a whole player. Um, because people develop at different uh, spaces, right? So I might have a kid with a phenomenal serve early on, but she's got to really work on maybe her footwork for passing or something like that, or uh, and vice versa. I might have a player with just really great hitting skills who is not the best blocker and needs to work, work on that. So that's, again, a place where lessons come into play, where you know you, you've got an idea for your game now. You know what your strengths and weaknesses are at this age, and you know where you need to work. And so it might be building on a strength, or it might be you know shoring up an area of the game where you're where you're not as great at, and you need to you know work on that. Uh, um, I think for me, this is might just be a little personal bias here, but I think it's really big for setters. Um, it can be definitely a challenge to get setters to the level they need to be in the short amount of time that's available on team practices. And so especially setters looking to move on to the next level, this is a big thing for them. Yes, no, I, I definitely agree. That's where these setters can definitely learn kind of those little tweaks and habits to make them involuntary because that's why these really good setters look so smooth and have so much finesse is it's almost these involuntary actions that they've practiced over and over and over again. So when we head into that 17, 18, um, I personally feel like there there's a shift between skill and IQ. This is where IQ almost plays that 
bigger role than your skill. Um, I, I know being a short player and a short hitter, uh, my IQ had to be much higher. My volleyball IQ had to be much higher than some other players because I had to figure out how to score because I didn't have the same angles or the same you know, abilities as some of these taller players. But with my IQ, I could still figure out where to put the ball and find a place on the court and make an impact in the game. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that was actually a discussion um, I, I was having with uh, one of my one of my club directors just uh, a couple months ago. Was you know one of the big challenges that we see coming into collegiate volleyball because is is a kid's ability decision making and that decision making is based on their IQ, right? Their understanding of the game. And so a big focus for me at this age, um, you should be really set in your skills. You're still going to be refining some of them, um, but you should have a really good solid skill set all the way around. Um, and so the big thing becomes decision making. Uh, and so I'll, I'll take teams uh, when I'm filling in as a guest coach, whether they're my own, co my own team, if I'm working with 17s and 18s. And I just talked a lot to them about, hey, here's a scenario, what's happening in a scenario, or what were you seeing on the court when you took that swing, or when you made that decision as a setter, or were you playing right there in defense? And so I want them to be able to give me a little bit more involved detail, um, a little more better answer than I'm supposed to be here. Okay, why? What did you see? Um, what are you understanding about the game? And so kind of developing their IQ is huge at this age level, being able to make decisions. Yeah, and also it's it's a lot of that mental game, right? Also trying to balance to still play like yourself. Um, so at this age, you, you know, you're definitely become more of a fan of the game. Um, I always use Catherine Plummer because she's amazing. Like you may watch Catherine Plummer, and she can do these amazing things and make these great shots. Um, but I'm not Catherine Plummer. <laughs> I wish I was. So making that decision based on my skills and abilities, but also at times taking a risk. So I, as you see, I can't even explain it into words, but finding that balance of, hey, I just learned this new thing. I'm gonna try it right now. Instead of being you know, the safety net where instead of a situation here where you try and tool off a block, you just tip because that's your safety. Right, absolutely. Um, that's, that's a great example. I was working with an 18th team uh, this spring with that, and I was talking to them about tooling, about being able to attack the edge of the block so the ball deflects out so that I earn a point. Um, just a basic description of tooling for the parents out there. Um, because I'm going at the block, and it's a scary for a hitter who's been trying to avoid the block their whole life. You know, and, and my, the athletes were asking me, well, what happens if you miss? And I'm like, well, then you just, you send the ball sailing out of bounds and you probably feel a little bad about that, but that's okay, you're learning. And so being able to take that risk of, hey, I'm gonna try something I haven't tried before. And if I miss, you know, that's, that's a tough situation because um, you're used to, to everything being you know, kind of, we're, we're avoiding the block versus, hey, I just, completely sailed the ball out of bounds because I was trying something new. Again, that's a bit of a scary situation, even for the older athletes. But this is the age level where they need to be able to try that. And like you said about balance, I mean, that's not something I'm going to be expecting them to try on every single swing, um, but they need to be able to do that. And maybe it's something they'll do a little more in practice and not as much in the game, but they still need to be willing to take those risks in the game if they want to be able to see the results of their decision making. Yeah, and this is definitely also with growth of the player comes the growth of the parent. So m mom and dad out there, whether whether you decide that you kind of want to learn the intricacies of, you know, the game and the strategy and the play, um, that's great because it gives you, you know, that deeper understanding. You can watch volleyball together. You can have different levels of discussions. Um, but also, like my mom, for example, she was definitely a fan of volleyball, but she did not know what the rules were. Um, my first collegiate game, she still asked us if we rotated, and I said, yes, mom, we still rotate. And she's like, you just make it look so good. Uh, so you can, you can still be a supportive parent just by enjoying and watching and cheering, too. Absolutely. Um, I, I think it's, from a 
from a coaching perspective, having being able to see a lot of these kind of relationships, some of the most fun that I get to have is, is the parents who know little about the game just enjoying watching their players play. It's 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 good. The kids love it. Um, you know, the coaches love it. The fans love it. Um, but it's it's fun. Yes. So so some other options that might come through here at this time we touched on it before is definitely recruiting uh so if you're on that track where you want to be recruited and you want to play you know ncaa volleyball or naia naia is very up and coming for competitiveness um and they also have scholarships uh that's when you really want to go to those college camps so you need to be seen by the coach um there's a lot of athletes out there the coach can't always find you you need to make sure you find the coach. So whether you go to an on-campus one or to, we call them an ID clinic or a recruit clinic where they might have multiple coaches, uh, you really want to do the research to find out what school you want to attend, what coach you want to play for, and then you know make that communication or find where they are um, because they're not always going to find you. That's, again, a very rare, I know it's a fun story, but it's a very rare situation where a coach will find you. Yep. And, and that gets um, a lot of decision making, a lot of thought has to go into this. Um, being able to go to the ID clinics, as you, as you put it, those are, those are great because uh, a lot of times they're shorter. Uh, they can be anywhere from one to three days. Um, you know, just coming in real quick, a chance for you to see what the coach is like, a chance for the coach to see you play in person. Um, yeah. And then this is also so important with, to have a good conversation with your coach. Is what, what is your target area? And you can go, you know, higher than that and lower than that both, but kind of figure out what your target area is, you know, what you're looking for in terms of program, level of competitiveness, academics. Um, it's, a, it's really a lot at, at this this age uh, it can feel overwhelming but you just have to take it have some people help talk you through it um do, as you get an idea of maybe maybe you've been in communication with the coach a little bit and you're you're interested in them and they've shown some interest in you um you want to go to their overnight camp in that and that sort of a situation if, if you feel like it's a good fit and you've had a good conversation um and that's a good time to not just go to their ID camp, but maybe go to one of their overnight camps or just have a discussion with them if you're actually in contact and say, hey, would it be better if I attended this camp? Or, um, but definitely reaching out, being proactive on your side of things and not waiting for them to reach to you. Um, there's a lot of resources out there in terms of you know what you should be emailing coaches, what you should be talking to them about. Uh, I'm sure NVA has put out a lot as well. So... Mm-hmm. That's definitely a big year for recruiting. Yeah, and and I always I always tell anyone that's starting the on the recruiting trail is you need to be proactive as an athlete to kind of have video and put yourself out there and communicate. Um, and it's it's okay if you get a no. Uh, just make sure like everything has to fit together. So I always say like pick a school. Um, if you weren't playing volleyball, you would still enjoy attending the school. Yes, that's very important. Very important. Um, and it, in a lot of ways, it's a lot like a job search, right? You're you're hunting for the for the great fit, and they're hunting for a great fit, and there's just you know you're talking to a lot of people during this time. And, and there's also some options. So if you're playing on a 17-18s eight, team and you aren't very interested in playing NCAA volleyball or NAIA where you have kind of, you know, the grind of school and your weight training and your game schedule, um, you can, for recreational, you can always play intramurals. Um, it's fun. It's usually co-ed. Sometimes there's uh, men's or women's only um, but it's a great way to socialize and still play just for fun. But then there's also club volleyball. So at a, a large amount of big schools, so I know Penn State, I know the University of Minnesota has it, where you can play club volleyball. And it's typically a fall and a spring semester activity that's student run. Um, sometimes there's a coach, sometimes there's not, but you still travel and have jerseys and you can go to nationals um so there's lots of options to play after that 17s 18s that's not necessarily ncaa volleyball yes 
and understanding um, a good fit for your player um, and allowing them some freedom of, of decision making in this is important as well. Um, again, having been at the collegiate level for some time, I've seen a lot of different athletes that I have coached from club end up going to college and then just as my experience as a college coach. Um, the athletes that tend to to enjoy it the most are the ones that had the best fit, um, regardless of what division it was, whether that was in the AA D1, D2, NAIA, D3, um, junior college, club ball, intramurals. Um, the athletes that just enjoy their time the most are the ones that found a good fit for themselves, and that's what they focused on in their search. Yes, and I, I think that's actually a great thing to review back on all of our ages, um, that's really what we want. That's what we want for coaches, that's what we want for players, that's what we want for parents, is to find a good fit so you really enjoy what you're doing. Um, it's not really this, you know, th volleyball, again, volleyball is really hard. It's not really this, you know, one size fit all kind of sport. Um, it's definitely finding the right fit for all parties involved. Yep, exactly. All right. Well, Tim, thanks for taking time out of your day <laughs> to chat with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Parents yeah. will definitely Hope have a wrap-up sheet on uh, digitalvolleyball.com um, for you to reference. Uh, so if you if you really want on a sheet of paper your volleyball journey for your athlete based on skill, we can wrap that up for you. All right, Tim, any okay. final Thanks words? Thanks for having me, Amy. <laughs> Just remember, at the end of the day, um, if we're not doing it for the right reasons, it's not going to be enjoyable. And so go out there, have fun, enjoy it. All right, perfect. Thank you. Bye.